Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'm jealous of my colleagues' 13 minutes, and I hope my other colleagues don't come back, and then I may try your patience <laughs> and go over time. Dr. Kagan, you said something that I wrote down, that just like a bolt of lightning, we should not just be spectators. You were, you were going through the atrocities that ISIL is committing and who they are and how dangerous they are. We should not just be spectators. We are spectators. Congress, Congress has been a spectator. Since August 8, we've been a spectator. Absent the one vote in September that we took to arm Syrian moderates, there is no evidence that Congress is concerned at all about ISIL, none. Our allies have no evidence that Congress is concerned, as an institution, I'm not, gonna, not talking about individuals. Our allies have no evidence that Congress is concerned about ISIL. ISIL has no evidence that Congress is concerned about ISIL. But most tragically, the thousands of people, U.S. men and women in service who are deployed and fighting this battle every day, they have no evidence that Congress is concerned about ISIL in the least. We've been at war since August the 8th. Everybody calls it a war. The president calls it a war. Within two weeks, the, the Article II mission to defend the embassy and the consulate in Erbil were Sa pretty safe, and he said, we got to go on the offense against ISIL, and presidents since Jefferson have basically said that was the dividing line between an Article II power of commander-in-chief and an Article I power where Congress has got to declare war or authorize military action. But now for nine and a half months, we have failed to do what is our fundamental job, what only we are supposed to do. There's not been a declaration of war. There's not been an authorization for use of military force. There's been no House committee action. There's been no House floor debate or vote. There was one committee vote in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in December, but there's been no meaningful floor debate and no meaningful Senate floor action. How strange it is, we're in a Congress that loves to punch this president as an imperial president and threaten lawsuits against him when he does stuff without congressional approval in the most solemn responsibility under Article I that Congress has, we have been silent. When we've got all these people overseas who are risking their lives every day, we have been silent. It's Congress that's the spectators. We've got opinions. You know, we, we'd call the play differently, but we're spectators when we ought to be decision makers. This is now a war into the 10th month without a clear legal basis. I call it extra legal or even illegal. The president himself has, in his own words, acknowledged that he's gone past the Article II power of imminent defense. The claim that the 2001 or 2002 authorizations cover an organization that didn't form till two years after 9-11, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And yet Congress has come up with one excuse after another to avoid taking action. The first excuse was this. The leaders, both parties, both houses, the four leaders went to the White House in June and said, do not make us take action on this war. You do what you want. Do not make us take action in Congress before the midterm elections. And Congress adjourned with an ongoing war six weeks before a midterm election, the earliest adjournment since 1960 before a midterm election with an ongoing war. We hadn't done anything about it. After the midterm election, then it was, well, but now the Senate's going to change hands, so we shouldn't do anything as a lame duck Senate because there will be a new Senate. So we waited until January. Then we came in, and a lot of folks said, well, you know, we shouldn't do Article I job because the president hadn't sent us a draft authorization. I harshly criticize the administration for not sending in a draft authorization over right when they started this legal action. But the fact that they didn't doesn't excuse Congress for not doing the job we're supposed to do. And now there's been an authorization pending before Congress since the 17th of February, more than three months, and we still haven't done anything. And I don't know what the excuse is now. I think you can only conclude that we don't want to take it up because we're either indifferent to this threat, and I don't think that's true, I think the real reason is we don't have the backbone to take it up and do the job that Congress is supposed to do. And what that means is, while we're not doing our job, there are others who are doing their job. We've deployed thousands into the theater of battle. Two folks who were uh, pilots off the deck of the Theodore Roosevelt, which, was home, which is homeported in Virginia, crashed a, a plane on 
takeoff the other day. We're deploying thousands and they're risking their lives. We have had deaths of American servicemen in connection with Operation Inherent Resolve. We have, have had deaths of American civilians who were held hostage. ISIL didn't start executing American hostages until after we started bombing them on the 8th of August. So we've had American deaths as a result of this war. We still haven't done anything. We've had over 3,000 airstrikes that the U.S. has done, and we still haven't done anything. And now the, the costs passed the $2 billion mark in April, and we still haven't done anything. I, it's just, it, I, I never would have contemplated before I came to this body that there would be a situation in which Congress would tolerate an ongoing war and just stand back and say, well, I guess the president can just do whatever the president wants to do. That. It's just not supposed to be that way. And one of the reasons I'm glad that the chair called this committee today is I'm hoping that the challenging events of last weekend, not only the fall of Ramadi, but if you, if you go into the details of that special forces operation in Syria, very, very serious. We were lucky that we didn't lose U.S. lives in that operation. It was very well done, but this is complicated and detailed, and it's going to go on for a very long time, and I just wonder how much longer Congress is going to just be a spectator. I mean, we can criticize the White House and the administration's strategy, and I'm going to, and we ought to keep doing it if we don't like it, but we really haven't earned the right. We haven't earned the right to be critics as long as we stand back and don't do the one thing that Congress is supposed to do. Thank you, Mr. Chair.